Oh. Okay, where are they? Oh, hey everyone. Sorry, I'm doing a PS4 video about hidden gems. I'm trying to find some in this chest here, but all I see are games like Skies of Arcadia Legends, and it's like, this is a GameCube game, so kind of worthless. Um, okay, here's some, but wait, I only have five PS4 games in here. I might need some help. I wonder who could help me. I go by Tiger Chainsaw. Really? That's the only person I can think of right now? Okay, I guess Tiger Chainsaw will have to do. Hey everyone, how's it going? Total Level here with a PS4 Hidden Gems video, so... The PlayStation 4 is one of my favorite systems ever. There's a great variety of games to play on it, and yeah, just a lot of fun. So I want to highlight a few hidden gems for the system itself, but I didn't want to do this alone. So I got my good friend Tiger Chainsaw to help out with this. So thank you very much for helping me out with this, as what we'll do is He's picked five hidden gems, I picked five hidden gems, and we'll go back and forth where we'll start with Tiger Chainsaw and then go to me and back and forth. That way, we both picked a variety of <laughs> different games of various genres for people to check out, both physical and digital games. So, without further ado, let's begin with Tiger Chainsaw, so take it away. Hey everyone, for those that don't know me, I go by Tiger Chainsaw, and today I am lucky enough to be invited onto Total Level's channel to be discussing PS4 Hidden Gems. Now the PS4 is one of my favorite consoles, I have a ton of games for it, and today I'm going to be sharing some hidden gems that are both physical, but also some digital only ones that I feel like never get discussed, and so I'm really excited to discuss the PS4, so Joey, thanks for having me on. Let's start with my first pick of PS4 Hidden Gems, and that's gonna be the game Code Vein. So Code Vein is very much a Soulsborne type-like game. It is very difficult, it is not for the faint of heart, and you are going to have to master the combat. But boy, oh boy, do the characters look great. I love the character designs. The girls are top heavy, obviously. That's a big perk of mine in gaming. But, you know, the combat is very satisfying. And I knew that whenever I reached a boss fight, I was in for a treat. You're not going to be able to beat the boss on your first try. Very rarely did I ever do that. You're going to have to study them. But when you do beat them, like... Bloodborne, like Demon Souls, it's very satisfying to defeat a boss. And as you're making your way through these environments, some of them are just gorgeous. I remember going through this really cool white cathedral level and just being in awe of these structures, of these buildings and these designs as these brutally difficult enemies just rain down on me. Now, I wouldn't exactly play code vein for the story it can get a little bit confusing but overall i think it does tell a solid tale to keep you interested at least and one of the cool features of code vein is that you can team up with another partner uh, to take down the game co-op and that might make the game a little bit easier but i'll tell you what i didn't do was i did not learn some of the key aspects of the gameplay mechanics you will need to pay attention to the tutorial. You will need to learn how to properly level up because those go a long way into making the game much easier on yourself. And I kind of just rushed through the tutorial and that was my mistake, but I still found a very enjoyable experience in Code Vein. There's many different play styles. The weapons are all fun. And you know, if you want an experience on the PS4 that is very challenging, that is going to leave you satisfied, and a game that has really nice character designs, then Code Vein is definitely a game that you should look into. 
Alright, excellent first pick. Now, I still have to play through this game. The parts I did play, a lot of fun with it, but I'm just terrible at these Souls-like games, right? So, I'll definitely have to put time into that, but yeah, excellent first choice. As for me, my first choice is <laughs> a game I definitely recognize is not going to be for everyone. This is a game that you either do really enjoy or you just think it's complete trash but I personally really like it and my first pick is Dusk Diver here. I still need to play Dusk Diver 2 as I hear that one improves on so many things from the first game but I still really enjoyed the first Dusk Diver here so let's talk about it. You're playing as Yumo, a high school girl where after trying to find this restaurant with her friends uh, she ends up in another realm where quickly she meets this guardian named Leo, who inadvertently kind of transfers his power to Yomo as she's able to fight these phantoms within this realm called Yushanding. If you're like me and enjoy Dynasty Warriors type gameplay, then this game may be for you. You will be beating many beasts up in this cool neon style world where also, you know, you're going to have some light RPG elements to level up your abilities and skills. Like I said, I recognize this game isn't going to be for everyone, but there's something fun that I just have with these types of games, and I know a good amount of others that also enjoy Dust Diver as well. This game also usually goes quite cheap digitally on the PlayStation Store for under $5, so it may be worth checking out. It's also available on Switch and PC, so yeah, <laughs> you know, you might want to check it out. But just so you know, if this gameplay doesn't look that interesting to you, then you may skip this one because what you're seeing is basically what you're getting here, as this game does lack variety and is very repetitive, but Again, I still really enjoy it, so that's my first pick for a hidden gem on PS4. With that, let's check back with Tiger Chainsaw for his next pick. Let's jump to a digital-only PS4 hidden gem, and one that I've discussed quite a bit on my channel. That's going to be Foul Play. So Foul Play was a random game that I believe I got through the PlayStation subscription service and it ended up being one of my favorite games of the year. I love Foul Play. It is a really silly beat-em-up. It takes place in the vein of a theatrical play, and you're on stage, but the entire story is told, uh, you know, it, it's like a play. You're on stage as these enemies or these guys in costumes come and they run to beat you up, it's not really a difficult game, but it's just so much fun. And again, this is a great co-op game. This is a great couch co-op game. And I feel like those are getting more and more rare, but Foul Play offers a lot in terms of just sitting down for a weekend, inviting a friend over, or you know your girlfriend, wife, whoever, and just playing it through with them. It's not a very long game, maybe five to eight hours but it's it's just a blast there's a lot of cool combos you can do the story is actually pretty well done but i think by far the best part of foul play is that it's it's not too difficult anyone can pick it up and play it but also the atmosphere in foul play is just really well done as i said this all takes place on a stage and they never let you forget that you're gonna see little bloopers of like a janitor that's forgetting uh, to clean up a certain act or you're forgetting some of the actors or some of the actors are forgetting their lines but overall it's just a blast and almost nobody talked about this game and i just felt like foul play really deserves some more attention and it's just such a fun beat -em up game that you can have tons of fun with with another person on the couch and for me that's well worth playing Foul Play, I'll have to check that out, and I'll have to see if I have it through PlayStation Plus, because usually uh, each month I'll add every game to the library, even if I'm not going to play them for a long time, right? So I'll have to see if it's in my PlayStation Plus library for me to check out, because yeah, that looks really, really cool. So 
thank you again for that, as, yeah, my next pick is what I consider one of the most sort of underappreciated kind of hidden gem uh, JRPGs on the PS4, as just had a lot of fun with this, and very surprised with the amount of fun I had, because usually this wouldn't be my type of game, but really enjoyed it, and my pick is Sakura Wars here. Sakura Wars acts as both a sequel and soft reboot of the series as you play as Kamiyama, a member of the Imperial Japanese Navy, in 1940s Japan with this steampunk-type setting, as you've been hired to be captain of the Combat Review's Flower Division Theater, trying to lead them back to their former glory, while also fighting demon threats surrounding you. You know, your typical anime stuff. <laughs> This game is a combination of dating sim, visual novel, and action RPG. I didn't think I would enjoy this game as much as I did because I'm not really a fan of any sort of dating sims, but the world itself along with the energetic characters make this game shine. It's also one of those where, while it acts as a sequel, you don't need to know anything about the Sakura Wars lore to enjoy this game. The combat I found was solid, you know, pretty solid enough, and the animation here is just gorgeous with many different anime type cutscenes, which shouldn't come as a surprise since this was a collaboration effort from many different artists of Pokemon, Persona, Sword Art Online, you know, just to name a few. There's also an anime version of this Sakura Wars, like this 2019 game, right? So you might want to check that out. And this game is quite cheap, so, you know, if you're a fan of JRPGs, I think many JRPG fans would love Sakura Wars. Now, let's see what Tiger Chainsaw has for us next. If you're looking for a spooky, but also a very unique PS4 game, well, I got a great choice for you. That's going to be The Final Station. Okay, so The Final Station is one of the most unique experiences that I have had. As far as horror games go, you're gonna look at this and you're gonna see that it's the bare minimum in terms of graphics. But the way that the atmosphere unfolds is so good and it's gonna leave you wondering what is behind each door what is going on in this world what is around the bend it's really a feeling that i haven't gotten in a long time when playing horror games and so kind of the plot of final station is there's something going on in this world there's some type of an invasion and you don't really know what it is. Is it an alien? Is it a virus breakout? Is it a war? You don't exactly know what's going on, but you just know that people around you, cities around you are not the same, and this invasion is getting closer to you. But what you are is you are a trained conductor, and so your job is to bring passengers to safety as well as supplies and so you'll make your way through these levels it keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what's going to be um in the room that you're about to open the door to and how they do this is they black out the rooms and as soon as you open the door the room lights up and you can see what's in the room but many times there's an enemy on screen and they're charging at you or there's you know a, a secret or two that's somewhere in the room that you have to discover and I was always having my finger on the trigger right as I open up the door because you just don't know if there's going to be something that pops up and scares you. And I know the enemies don't look scary, but when you're in that mindset of trying to survive, it's, it's just a really cool horror experience. And then as I mentioned, you are a trained conductor. And there is this one moment that I'll never forget. I'm playing the game. It's late at night. You still don't know exactly what's going on and you're heading toward this massive invasion and you're getting these reports and the train that you're taking is going through the mountains and you know on the other side of the mountains is this giant war 
and I remember just sitting there in silence as the train is going and seeing the explosions on the horizon. I'm going toward it and I was just thinking like, man, this is so well done for a game that is just so minimalistic as far as graphics go. It's a really fun game and it's one that you can beat in a weekend, but man, this is a really cool horror experience that really doesn't I don't think it ever gets talked about, and so this is definitely one of my PS4 hidden gems. The Final Station is an excellent choice as, yeah, I played that game through Steam. Really cool game, and it just shows that, you know, you don't need the most high-end graphics or anything to create a very atmospheric horror game, right? As, for me, let's keep the pixel train rolling here, pun intended, <laughs> with... A uh, platformer that I actually just beat, like, a few days ago, and that's Kaze and the Wild Masks here. When it comes to platformers, I find a good many tend to get overlooked, as Kaze is no exception. The story with this game is that the Crystal Islands here got cursed, and Kaze must travel through these various levels in order to restore peace to the island, while getting past many different vegetable type enemies in these levels and trying to save her friend Hogo. Kaze and the Wild Mask takes many inspirations from Donkey Kong Country, including its difficulty. This game kicked my butt quite a lot throughout my playthrough, but it was still a lot of fun due to the great level design that this game offers. There's also two modes to play this game, with classic mode being kind of easier on the players, while original mode is kind of your normal difficulty, which is the mode I played on. There are four worlds to play through, with each world having a bonus level, where you're able to unlock that bonus level if through each world you're able to complete these kind of challenges, two different challenges per level. I will definitely need to go back to 100% this game as it was such a fun platformer despite the difficulty curve, or I'm just terrible at platformers, which is very, very possible. <laughs> but give Kaze and the Wild Masks a look as, yeah, it's just a really cool platformer. And let's get back to Tiger Chainsaw with his fourth hidden gem pick. Sticking with that spooky theme of my last PS4 hidden gem, let's talk about a game that is much more bigger as it's a AAA title, but it also is one that flew under the radar and I just feel like nobody really appreciates it for what it is, and that's going to be the game Prey. So from one horror title that was extremely minimalistic, it's an indie title, which was The Final Station, to a AAA title, which is Prey. And Prey does a lot of good stuff that I didn't experience for the PS4 generation. And that was Prey's biggest mechanic as far as horror games go, is you don't know what's real and what's not. And the main enemy in Prey are these things called mimics. And these mimics can mimic anything so they could look like a cup they could look like a chair a desk you just don't know what the mimic is and you're exploring these buildings you're exploring you know these science facilities and you're just making your way trying to survive you are close to the action you know you're not too far away from what is going on in the story and so you're kind of putting the pieces together as you follow the footsteps of the survivors. But I remember just like, I'd enter a room and I would just like point my gun at everything. And you can kind of get the mimics to move if you kind of throw something at them or if you make the object move. And so there were times when a cup might be rolling on the ground and I'm like shooting at it because I thought it's a mimic, but it's, it's not. So Prey does a really good job of just mentally messing with you. But also, the gameplay is really good. I thought the combat was very fair. I thought the controls were sharp. 
I thought there was a lot of cool options as far as exploring goes. And I just feel like no one really discusses Prey, even though it was from a AAA publisher. So I thought that was interesting that I, I just feel like it flown under the radar despite being a very solid game. And so, you know, hey, that's two horror games, two vastly different horror games on the PS4 that I would consider both PS4 hidden gems. I agree. Prey is a very underappreciated game that kind of flew under the radar as went kind of through weird development, right? Because Prey 2 got cancelled and then this kind of soft reboot came out and... Yeah, just not too many people checked it out, but it is a very fun game, excellent game, so another excellent choice from Tiger Chainsaw. So my next pick is a House Mark game, or House Marky, I think it's House Mark, <laughs> because I always thought it was House Marky, and it wasn't, so. Anyways, but for House Mark, you know, they create really cool arcadey experiences with the likes of Dead Nation, Super Stardust HD, and my personal favorite, Resogun, that most people would know about, but one that I feel has really flown under the radar and isn't really talked about at all from them is my second favorite game from them after Resogun is Matterfall here. Matterfall is a high action side scrolling shooter with a bit of platforming as well. The game takes place in a sci-fi future as the world has been infected with an alien material known as Smart Matter. Playing as Avalon, you will be combating these infected creatures using your blue matter while avoiding and dodging the red matter that these infected enemies throw at you, along with saving civilians who are trapped within each of these levels. This is one of those games that's so fun and addictive, you're going to want to replay these levels many times over to get a much better score and keep your multiplier going. It takes a bit to get used to due to the controls having you use R1, L1, R2, and L2 for jumping, dodging, special attacks, while using the left and right thumbsticks to run and gun. Once you get used to it though, you'll find you're having a blast with the insane action of this game. It feels a lot like Resogun if Resogun had you kind of on the ground and just <laughs> fighting alien creatures this way, right? I find Matterfall is often overlooked and if you enjoy other Housemark games, then check out Matterfall. With that, Let's see what Tiger Chainsaw has as his final hidden gem for the PlayStation 4. And for my final choice for some PS4 hidden gems, I'm going to go with a tactical turn-based strategy game. But it's one of the best that I've ever experienced. That's going to be Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. So this final pick is a very unique game and I remember watching the opening video for this and thinking, whoa, this game is gonna be fun. I love the character designs for Mutant Year Zero. You're these humanoid duck and warthog and they have these really cool quips with each other and the whole point of the game is you are in this post-apocalyptic world, something you know terrible has happened, and you are branching out slowly, uh, expanding your base, and trying to figure out how it all started, where it all began. And now I, I will say that the plot, the quote unquote twist, you can see coming a mile away. But that doesn't mean that it's not, you know, a fun story to experience. But the best part about Mutant Year Zero, by far, is the turn-based tactical gameplay. This game is going to kick your butt in the first five hours. But once you get over that difficulty curve, it gets really satisfying. And one of the most satisfying parts is that the entire environment is destructible. So if someone is hiding behind a wall, 
you can throw a grenade, you can bust that wall down, you can try and smoke them out by throwing a firebomb to spread to the fire. There's so many different ways to attack a battle. And I remember replaying a few of them and it was just eye-opening. It's like, oh, okay. If I do that, then this enemy is gonna come out here. If I go here, then I'm gonna be trapped into this building. So there's a lot of trial and error that happens, but it's always fun trial and error. You're never gonna get frustrated. And like I said, once you get past that difficulty curve where you can level up your weapons, your armor, your characters, it gets really satisfying to go through Mutant Year Zero. This is just a game that I feel like really scratches that itch for those people that are looking for turn-based tactical strategy games. And there's really not a ton of them out there with this high of quality of gameplay and voice acting and graphics. It all blends together really, really well. And for me, you know, Mutant Year Zero is a pretty obvious choice for a PS4 hidden gem. Joey, thanks for having me on your channel. I am always down to talk the PlayStation brand. That's my favorite. And sharing hidden gems and discussing games that flew under the radar is one of my favorite things to do. So thanks again for having me on your channel to discuss PS4 hidden gems. Mutant Year Zero, that's definitely something I'll have to check out for myself. I believe I have it on Steam, so... Yeah, thank you so much, Tiger Chainsaw, for all your great picks. You've given me a lot of picks for me to check out myself, so... Thank you for that, and thanks for doing this, so... My final pick is... A Vanillaware title that... I personally think is the best one they've done so far, and there's a lot of great Vanillaware titles of... Odin Sphere and Dragon's Crown, you know, uh, Muramusa Demon Blade, right? But <laughs> this one was really, really cool, and it's 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. 13 Sentinels is one of the most unique and best story driven games I have played. First, always gotta praise Vanillaware's amazing art style here. It's always so gorgeous to look at. Then, for the game itself, you play as 13 different characters throughout, as each of them are connected to each other as you will be traveling in both the past and future to prevent a certain doomsday from arriving. There are two types of gameplay here. The first is playing through these character stories, getting clues within each character to help you with other characters throughout the playthrough. There will be many points where you will be playing as one character, only to get to a certain point and being locked out of the next parts in that character, because you're going to have to switch to another character in order to get clues and information that will help you later on to unlock paths that are locked to you. The second gameplay element are these real-time strategy battles where you will be fighting these monsters attacking Japan. What's funny about this is where these RTS segments are kind of your actual gameplay right of attacking enemies and whatnot, yet these RTS segments are probably my least favorite part of the game. They're not bad or anything and you can change the difficulty to make them easier, but I found that they were kind of pretty basic and not as interesting as the story dialogue segments to me. Still though, with an excellent story and some truly amazing characters that stand out from one each other in this game. It's one of those games that I think more people need to check out. Do not sleep on 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Thank you Tiger Chainsaw for helping me out on this video and giving some great PlayStation 4 hidden gems for others to check out. And now, Let's do the outro. And so, those are 10 hidden gems for the PlayStation 4 of various variety and genres. Also, most of these games are on other platforms too, so... A lot of different choices for people to check out, not just on the PlayStation 4, so... Yeah, great choices from Tiger Chainsaw, as I want to thank him once again for helping me do this. Thank you very much, as... 
yeah, let me know what are some of your hidden gems for this system. Keep in mind that I will be revisiting this over and over again at some point because there's a lot of different hidden gems, not just for the PlayStation 4, but for other systems as well for me to talk about and yeah, everyone to check out. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Like I said, let me know what are some of your hidden gems in the comments down below. Check out Tiger Chainsaw if you haven't done so already. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below. And I'll see you all next time for more hidden gem videos, along with other videos I do on my channel. Thanks everyone, have a great rest of your day. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, or if you just want to see any of my skits and then nothing else and leave the video, that's fine too. <laughs> Thanks everyone, take care.